You watching that again? Sorry I'm late. Flight was delayed. Lucky you. How are you, darling? Welcome home. Good trip. Sorry? How was your day? Oh, fine. Not worth talking about. You eating? Yeah. Max. Is that yours? I thought it was mine. Yeah. Come on, finish your breakfast. Three minutes. Then we'll go. Have you got your school bag? It's done. Got your fruit snack? It's done. Got your kit? It's done. Right, come on. Can I get your lunch boxes? James, will you bring your tie? That's it. Right, come on, son. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. That's it. Right. Right, come on, come on. Am I staying with the baby? No, I wouldn't do that to him. Whoa, that's it. You better get changed. You'll be late. Bye. Bye. Just at the edge of the forest, a very crafty fellow was waiting. It was a wolf. When Little Red Riding Hood passed by, he greeted her with a slow smile. Oh, 
those slides that you prepared for the presentation were fantastic. The client was so impressed that I told them I did it. Just kidding. No, I made sure that Simonson knew that you were responsible. Well done. Take the rest of the day off. Just kidding about that, too. Call on mine, too. Well, have you, uh, have you spoken to the GP? And? All right, well, I'll be there as quick as I can. Bye. Got to talk to you about some urgent research we need to put together. Yeah. Fine. Um, can we do it later? He's been like this all morning. Oh, I'm sorry. He keeps holding his ear. Maybe he has another ear infection. Well, we've got an appointment with the GP, so... Mrs. Shields, I've had another complaint from a parent. Um, could you, um, take Nicky for a minute, please? Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Just for a minute. Come on. Good boy. Calm down. Calm down. Okay. Come on. Oh, Nicky, come on. We can't keep Nicky here. But he was fine last time. It's not good for the other children, and I just don't have the staff to look after him. We're not helping him. I hope you understand. No, I don't understand. Why would I understand? Do you want me to say something to make you feel better? I can't. He needs special care. You have to face that. I'm sorry. Wakefield. Yes. I've been asking for a secretary for ages. We just can't keep up. I wonder if you could look at my son. I think you're probably in the wrong place. I'm not a pediatric gastroenterologist. I know. I've been phoning you for two months. You didn't return my call. Sorry. There just aren't enough hours in the day. Look, I can suggest someone. I've asked to be referred to you. I've read your work on Crohn's, inflammatory bowel disease, and the measles. You, you a doctor? No, I'm a mother. Something's happened to my son. I thought you might be able to help. This is... Philip. Hi, Philip. I think Nicky's got another ear infection. He needs more antibiotics. You do, do you? Yes. Did you finish the last course I prescribed? The body builds up yes. resistance. Yes, of course we finished it. I can't simply prescribe antibiotics every time your son has a cold. Well, look at him. He's in pain. I mean... Nicky, is your ear hurting you? Can you hear me? What's he been able to tell you? He hasn't told me anything. He hasn't spoken for over two weeks. He's just, I don't know, withdrawn into himself. Let's look into your ear, shall we? Just have a little look into your ear. <coughs> we'll just turn around. Yeah. Come on. Have a little look in your ear. It's all right. It's all right. Come on, let's, let's do it. Just have a little, little look. look in your ear. It won't hurt, darling. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. All right, let's see. Has he had a hearing test? Yes, his hearing was fine. Has he had a test? Oh, look, something is wrong with my son. Can't you see that? He's been sick for months. He's not the same as he was. Can't you see that? Look at him. He's right in front of you. Can't you see he's not right? I'm going to refer you to an ear, nose, and throat specialist. Mm -hmm. This is a, a, a little light. I'm just going to shine it into your, into your mouth to, to have a quick look. Just open your mouth. Nicky, Nicky. Oh, sorry. Here. It's all right. Here. 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 Here
I'm going to refer you to a uh, consultant pediatrician. Stop there. You need a biopsy of that. Listen, Helen, I'll be back as soon as I can, okay? Simonson called four times. He wants you at the three o'clock meeting. I'll make an excuse. Thanks. His immune system seems to have crashed, and he's failing to thrive. Are you feeding him enough? As for the loss of language and communication skills, I'm going to refer you to a pediatric psychiatrist. Something happened to him about six months ago. Then something happened to him. He became ill. Yes, I can see that from the notes. But he had a language delay that was picked up at about 24 months? Yes. It's just you said you thought he was normal. Oh, yes, but, but after that he made great progress. And he socialized well with other children. Did he? You work full time, do you? Nanny? Hmm. Sometimes nannies who are overbearing can provoke language delay. But I've seen mothers slap their children in supermarkets, scream at them. Those kids can talk. I think we need to intervene. It's speech and play therapy. I'm going to refer you to an educational psychologist. suffers from receptive aphasia. He has autism. Are you all right?
of that. <clears throat> How was your day? I quit my job. Oh, right. Not the answer I expected. I let Anne go, actually. Well, she was going to go anyway, wasn't she? It's all been getting too much for her. A bit extreme. I don't think so. Look, in our hearts, we both sensed there was a problem. Now we know. I guess we were both in denial or something. Nothing's really changed except that we know. He was fine. That's what's changed. There was a time when he was fine. And I can still remember that time. I'm not imagining it, Martin. Look, we've got to try and be sensible about this. I know you're sad and so am I, but he is what he is and there is nothing we can do about it. We just have to do what we can for him, the best that we can. We've got Max. Why did it happen? It didn't happen. It just is. It's genetic or something. It's not your fault. Nobody's blaming you. I am. Well, that's just ridiculous. It's pointless. I bet you could get your job back. You call them tomorrow, just told them the situation. Told them? They said take two weeks, a month. Think it'll be better in a month. Work will take your mind off things. There's no point just sitting at home getting depressed. What's the point in that? Something happened to him. That's what I know in my heart. Talking to a colleague at work. And he suggested. Oh, sorry. Can't you control your child? No, as it happens. Maybe it'd be a good idea if we had a chat with a neurologist. We? If I've got some time, I'm happy to come. A neurologist? Yeah, you know, a brain specialist. Yes. Is that what they are? Right. I haven't got one of those. It might complete my collection. Oh, I'm sorry it's not stamped. Oh. Yes. Now listen, Nicky, you're going to have this juice when we finish shopping, OK? Look, when we finish, darling. When we finish. Oh, my God. All right, Nicky. All right, Nicky. No, that's too big for Max. And for Nicky. Nicky? Yeah, his constipation's got so bad now, he can't poo sitting down, so he stands up and holds onto the sink. And I am tired of clearing it up. Maybe he needs more fruit and fibre in his diet. Oh, there's an idea. Never thought of that. No need to be sarcastic. Oh, sorry. Can't help myself. Must be genetic. I'm just trying to help. Was he normal? He was there. You've seen him grow up. Was he normal? He was our first child. We didn't know what normal was. When you love someone, you don't want to see things. So he's a neurologist for me or for Nicky. His eyes are dead. That's when he was ill. His fourth birthday party? He's smiling. That's what happens at birthday parties. Two months later, his hair is coarse again. His eyes are dead. When do you last remember him smiling? Chris, maybe we should get some counselling. Look, I have 
haven't got time for this. I've got two children waiting in the car. I, I can't just... give you your son's records without speaking to Dr. Ash. If you fill out a form telling us which GP you're transferring to, then we can send the records directly to them. I just want the records. I can't that is... do that. I'm sorry. Well, if you're worried about anything, come on. He's busy! My son has autism. Did you know that? Missed that one, did you? So did I. I'm sorry. I told her you were... I want his complete medical records. Because I want to find a doctor who actually listens to their patients. And that may take some time. Tonight. I'm going with you. I want to hear what the doctor has to say for myself. Don't think I'll tell you the truth? Look at this. Look. He's fine, right? Look at the photo. Twelve months. No problem. Now, look at his medical record. The notes. When did he first start getting ill? Double ear infection, bronchitis. 16 months. Right. What happened at 15 months? Honestly, oh, Chris, it's unrelated. Unrelated? Oh, get out of the road! Piss off! How do you know it's unrelated? What happened to him at age four? Go on, look. Look, what is your problem? I think you should just concentrate on driving. And two months later? If I were to die of a heart attack right now, it wouldn't mean that cars cause heart attacks. Okay, it might. Vitigo, ear infection, bronchiolitis, lymphatic inflammation. He's had a tough five years, hasn't he? He was fine until about 15 months, and then he had the MMR jab. He did? Good. Well, that's appropriate for his age. Considering how susceptible he appears to be to an infection, it was a responsible thing to do. At about 18 months, his language started to go. Words that he was saying vanished. That's when he first presented symptoms of receptive aphasia? Yes. Yes, but over time, he got better. He seemed to get better? And then he had the MMR booster, and within weeks he got ill again. And two months later, he just disappeared. The boy I knew disappeared. Of course, the two things aren't related. It happens to Nicky twice, and you're confident it's unrelated. Once might be a coincidence, but twice starts to look like a pattern. It's a very safe vaccine. Tried and proven, doctors are very confident there are no ill effects. Except in 1992, when they had to withdraw it because the Urabi strain of the mumps virus caused viral meningitis. My wife does research for a bank. Did? Now your wife does research because she's severely pissed off. Well, that experience can give us confidence. They're unlikely to repeat the mistake. Of course not. Not the same one. Not here. Doesn't stop them sending it to Brazil. Fills me with confidence. How about you? It would be convenient to be able to blame something for Nicky's problems. Convenient? It's human nature to want to be able to explain why something happened. Sometimes we can't. 
His bowel problems are normal for someone with his condition. I can recommend a gastroenterologist. If he's in pain, then his behavior is bound to be hard to control. We need to get him a statement of educational needs and place into an environment where he can be taken care of. I want to know why this happened to him. We don't fully understand autism. He was fine. He had a jab. Then he wasn't. Autism presents itself at around two years of age. That's consistent with Nicky's story. He hit all of his milestones. Parents often fail to see the problem until the gap between their child and all capable peers is very clear to see. Something happened to him! Mm. Look mm. at these photos. Mm. Look at how he was. Mm. Mm. Look at how he is now. Mm. What did I miss? Here. I made some copies for you. You're a neurologist. I thought you might be interested. I thought perhaps you might shed a small amount of light on what happened to my son. Rather than suggest that I was blind or so insufficiently interested in Nikki's well-being that I missed two years of symptoms. Christine. I understand how difficult this must be for you. That I doubt. Well, thanks for your insight. She's obviously in a lot of pain. There's a normal period of denial and searching for something or someone to blame. Don't worry. Shouldn't we just try and make Mickey comfortable? She told you I was in denial, right? <sighs> She's the one in denial. They all are. This isn't about Nikki. This is about you. You've made this all about you. It's you against the world. You're right. You're the only one who cares because you feel guilty, I suppose, like it's your fault. Yeah, that's you again, isn't it? Your fault. That's what's so sad about the whole thing. If you really feel that way, I, I think you should probably have kept that to yourself. I'm going. What time will you be home? suffers from autism. Mother insists it's regressive. Want to take a look? Hmm. She says the aphasia was post-MMR. I'd like to have a look. Can 
Can you come to the clinic? Yeah. I'll set it up. Communication skills, his social skills. And both. First jab and a booster. That's right. But the second floored him. You believe me? Why wouldn't I believe you? I'm just so tired. I'm so sorry. We'd like to admit Nicky and give him some medication to clear the obstruction of his bowel. Once they're cleared, we can have a look and see what we find. similar to those with Crohn's disease we've looked at. Less obvious damage, but similar. Did the boy contract the measles? Not to the mother's knowledge. We found the measles protein in the gut. So how did it get there? Kids are in the garden. I'll get them. I thought maybe I might just take Max. Give him some time on his own. Okay. That'd be good for him. I mean, Nicky doesn't really know. Who you are? Oh, I think he does. It'd be good for Max. Hello, you. Hello. Hello. Nicky. How long does the vaccination keep? Oh, it has a preservative. Oh, and and what's the nature of? Oh no, no, no. I'm, I'm not a doctor. I'm a um. It's a it's a university assignment. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, no problem. No, my name is Sally Maynard. Yes, that's fine. I'll, I'll hold. You have failed. Wow. Well, at least we're not alone. It's the neurological damage that's troubling. Why do children with autism appear to share chronic bowel problems? Is the autism a coincidence or a consequence? Well, we're not neurologists. I think we should confine the work to the bowel damage. Why? Of the cases we've seen, all the mothers insist the autism is regressive. Chances are they never noticed it until the symptoms became so apparent they couldn't be avoided. That's possible. Well, I'd say it's probable. You have children. Wouldn't you have noticed? Anecdotally, the regression appears to start after the MMR. Well, what's the nature of the disease? What's the pathology? 
What if it's something simple? A 15-month-old child with a developing immune system comes to get his vaccination. He's already had DTP and Hib in the first year of his life. He's given the MMR. It enters the bloodstream. Now, already, we've altered the natural pathology of the disease. Measles is an airborne virus that encountered the pulmonary system long before it entered the bloodstream. Now we're injecting and bypassing the natural route of exposure. The immune system responds, and the body begins to fight the invading viruses. But the measles virus isn't contained. It isn't defeated. It looks for somewhere to take up residence, and it finds the ileum between the large and small intestine, and it multiplies, eluding the immune system. It hides in the very cells that should be destroying it, causing inflammation. That's consistent with the mother's story. The child is often chronically ill with diseases which the immune system would normally see off. So the mother feeds the fever, making sure the child is well nourished, so that the child can fight the fever and infection. But the intestine, because it's been damaged, can no longer do its job properly and can't clean or keep toxins produced by the digestive process out of the blood. So the gluten and casein fragments from the wheat and milk are not expelled. Other medical researchers have already shown that these toxins are like morphine, dangerous and destructive, and the body can't rid itself of them. So where do they go? Where morphine classically has its effect? The brain. These toxins may cause the damage to the developing brain and the resulting autism because of a breakdown in the function of the gut. It's a theory. But why doesn't it happen to all children? That's what we have to find out. How many subjects do we need? As many as we can find. And there must be a cofactor. If a small percentage of children are damaged by the MMR and the others aren't, what's the cofactor? Do I look all right? Oh, come on, I'll eat up, Nikki. Don't play with it, darling. Come on. Here. Here. Are you? You're a good boy. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> Hi. Got splattered? <laughs> oh, well, at least it's not sick. Listen, thanks for doing this. Every single one of the babysitters I rang was busy. Funny that, eh? Oh, look. I found out about this amazing guy in Sunderland, Paul Shattuck. He's been doing research on autism and diet for years. Hi, Nicky. Max is in bed, I'm afraid. Sorry, but he was shattered when I picked him up from the nursery. Oh, did I tell you? I think he's going to be part of a study at the Royal Free. Is he? Yeah. He might have asked. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're right. I should have asked you. I'm, yeah, I, I suppose I didn't think you'd mind. I mean, I was only doing what's best for him, you know? No, no, I apologise. I, I should have talked to you about it's it. It's all right. So help yourself to whatever you want in the fridge. Oh, I'll order a pizza. No, you won't. Can't have wheat or dairy in the house. No pizza, no biscuits, no milk before bed. If the toxins are causing him the damage, then we stop giving him the toxins. Chris, you can't cure autism. Get a curry. You like curry. Rice is good, but not korma. Korma's got cream in it. No idea what time I'll be back. Listen, you're welcome to stay the night. I mean, I know you've got to get into the office early and be tired, so stay the night. Chris, I've started seeing someone else. Oh, you move fast. I've known her for a while. So 
go, what's the cofactor? That's what I'm focusing on. What put Nicky at risk? You see, if a child has a cold when he has his vaccinations, but his immune system's depleted. I thought I should tell you so you didn't hear it from someone else. If a child's mother has a history of autoimmune disease, like rheumatoid arthritis, for example, if a child is hypersensitive to mercury, mercury is a known immune system suppressant. Well, what's the preservative in Hib and DTP? Hmm? Mercury. When did Nicky have those jabs? Two months before his MMR. after the MMR, my son had a massive seizure. I mean, some time later, the hospital neurologist told me that they thought it was encephalopathy caused by the measles virus in the MMR. Yeah. I mean, but when I read his official notes in the report, it said that the MMR had revealed epilepsy. And caused it. I mean, I'm looking at my son's notes, and I know it's a lie. Because it's convenient to lie, and there's nothing I can do about it. Are you anally retentive, compulsive, and obsessive? And they don't care what happens. Well, of course not. Yes. <laughs> Me too. And Valerie. Christine. Well, you see, he's fine. Now he's got autism and bowel disease. I mean, this vaccination has just ruined our lives, and no one cares. No one cares. Well, it's a conspiracy. The drug companies and the doctors, they don't want to look into it, because if they did, they'd be liable, and they know this. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the club you don't want to be part of. How old is your child? Eight. A boy. They're almost always boys, aren't they? Yours? Five. I've been looking into this since 1992. Oh, Jesus. It's known that some children are going to have bad side effects from vaccination. Oh, but no doctor would knowingly hurt a patient, would they? They admit it. I mean, that's why they set up the vaccination compensation unit. But, I mean, we can't go around saying that all vaccination is, is bad. Why not? Well, because most kids aren't affected. And they'll think we're nutters. <laughs> <laughs> they already do. <laughs> Our children are the cost of society for what's called herd immunity. So long as it's small, they accept it. But it's not small anymore. When the government sees scientific evidence that shows the MMR to be a threat, they'll act. We have to help find the evidence. Mm -hmm. Look, there's a doctor at the Royal Free. He's doing a study, and he hopes to publish soon. And so we have just got to stick with it. And with mm -hmm. him, we own him that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hello? It's OK, Nick. He's going through withdrawal. Withdrawal? Because of the diet. Doctor, doctor said it might happen. It's all right, darling. It's all right. No. Oh, I can't watch this. You don't have to. We've got 12 in the study. It's pasta and a salad, well enough. Yeah, great. All showing a curious pathology, autistic enterocolitis. Now, it could be a coincidence. I mean, it's a small sample. But well, make sure you acknowledge that in the paper. Yeah, we intend to. Oh, that's fantastic. That's not a gun, is it? No, it's a rugby ball. Oh, yeah, of course it is. Go to bed! So, what's the problem? Well, anecdotally, most of the 12 mothers make a temporal link between their child's disease and vaccination with the MMR. So we're split as to whether we should mention that in the paper. It could be a coincidence. Well, of course it could be. But almost all scientific discovery is based on some anecdotal information. And to ignore the mothers would be turning a blind eye. But we're talking about mothers who are emotionally disturbed by their child's illness. Which is natural. Absolutely. And whose need to find a villain may colour their recollection. Mm, that's a reasonable concern. We found the measles virus protein, which would support that story. But the testing we've done just isn't reliable enough to publish. 
and until we can genetically test it mm. and prove it's vaccination strain and not wild strain measles, well, we can't make a direct link to the MMR. Do you think the MMR caused the disease? I wish I knew. I can't censor the parent story. Do you think it poses a real threat to children? Some children, yes. All the parents believe there's a connection with the MMR. Publish the anecdotal link with the disclaimer. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way to handle it. Pretty, organized, clever, and she cooks. <laughs> Who are we talking about? <laughs> mm, she's great. Okay. You're going to let the chief medical officer know what you think you found before you publish? Mm, of course. I'll write to him. Be irresponsible not to. Give him a chance to come up with a single vaccination strategy. Nobody believed these mothers. No? Really? I'm shocked. Tell them to get white coats and a stethoscope. That might help. I know, Martin. I know, darling. I know. My fault, darling. My fault. It was all my fault, darling. You got it all. Come on, come on. Jesus, darling, it's all my fault. Come and let me. Come on. The Lancet have agreed to publish the paper. Yes. <laughs> well done, people. Well done. Did Kenneth Kalman ever respond to your letter? No. We need to speak to the health minister. Uh, minister, Andrew Wakefield, Tessa Jarl. Thank you for meeting me, Minister. Anna Hopkins. Richard. You know Sir Kenneth Kalman, Chief Medical Officer? Uh, yes, of course. Nice to see you. Oh, yeah. How do you know? Come on in. Please sit down. Our group at the Royal Free didn't expect to find what looks to be a worrying new syndrome. Andrew? We have a lovely day with David. The safety of the MMR is in doubt. We need to act to protect children who haven't yet been vaccinated. You're not against vaccination? Absolutely not. But the number of children who may be affected is worrying. Now, we can't yet confirm the suspected link between the measles element of the MMR and onset of the syndrome. But with advances in molecular biology and increased funding to continue our work, we expect to be able to confirm a link very soon. Twelve cases? In the study, that's right. 
We've seen many more, and we have many new referrals yet to look at. Well, our group has nearly 500 more who've contacted us with their histories. And the Committee on the Safety of Medicines has been sent letters documenting 1,200 other children. But 12 that you've looked at in depth. Uh, as I'm sure you know, Dr. Wakefield has published over 100 papers. He's one of our more distinguished gastroenterologists. You were right to bring this to our attention. We need to look into this. When does The Lancet intend to publish? Very shortly. Uh, perhaps it would be appropriate for the Medical Research Council to convene a forum of independent experts to look into it. Mm. Sir Kenneth? Shall we go down and get you some breakfast, darling? When Jamie figured out what blue meant, I drank a whole bottle by myself. <laughs> Best party I've been to in years. I think today deserves a celebration. Come on through. Cheese. I want... Juice. Cheese. Very good saying cheese. I want juice. ABA takes everything Jamie, back to basics. I want... Applied behaviour analysis. Chocolate. Jamie, this is Lisa. Jamie's ABA tutor. Hi. Jamie, this is Mickey. Don't worry, he'll be fine with us. Lisa's an absolute miracle worker. The things she's done for my son. Hey. I'm madly in love with her. I've offered to have sex with her, but no. <laughs> Just as well. I'm not sure I can remember what it's like. My husband left so long ago. <coughs> Does he keep in touch with Jamie? Oh, yeah. Never forgets a Christmas card. How long since Martin walked? Mm. Six months. And how many times have you gone out since then? Gone out? <laughs> What does that mean? Exactly. Actually, I don't really miss it. All that pitching looks and dinner party chats and that. Nannies and school stuff your head in. Do you know, eight out of ten couples with a disabled child split up. Can you believe that? With statistics. Hey, Annie. We're ready. Come on. Let's go and watch him slay the dragon. Yes. Department of Pediatric Gastroenterology and the Inflammatory Bowel Disease Study Group have worked together to produce this study. A multidisciplinary team of 18 scientists and clinicians, as well as 12 associated collaborators, make up the investigative group, many of whom are with us here today. As well as the Dean of the Medical School, Dr. Richard Stein. 
Dr. Wickfield? Thank you. Autistic enterocolitis seems to be a new syndrome of autism and intestinal disease in young children, distinguished by a developmental regression in a previously healthy child. Each of the children we studied had developmental records which showed satisfactory achievement of early milestones. Anecdotally, the parents noticed developmental regression and bowel symptoms shortly after the MMR vaccination. We've included these anecdotal observations in our paper. Clearly, it's important that we continue our investigation into this new syndrome and its possible relation to this vaccine. Dr. Wakefield, Dr. Wakefield. Um, what would you do about the MMR for your child? Obviously, I'm, uh, I'm alarmed, uh, but it's important to stress that I'm not against vaccination per se. If it were my child, I would give each component of the MMR singly and a year apart until this issue is resolved scientifically. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wakefield. <coughs> it is important to add that there is no evidence to suggest that we should stop the MMR program. And I think I should stress that the MMR is vital in the protection of the health of our children. No evidence but a tosser. No. You're all right. They're not going to do anything. Well, look, it's, it's published, you know, it's in the open. I mean, we can't hide it anymore. I look at my boy. What's happened to him? And he says there's no evidence. They did the same thing about meat when that minister made his kid eat the hamburger. Maybe he'll give his child a chance for the cameras. How could you wish that on anyone? the question about what you do. I felt I did. The research doesn't support single vaccination. The safety studies don't support the MMR. You're talking about a small number of children, Andy. How many do there have to be before we get worried? If they're not immunized, they're in greater danger. I didn't suggest that either. I want the work to continue, Andrew. Be careful. We got a problem. Well, we won't know how big until we see how the newspapers play it. study group playing at? They wanted a headline. Makes a good one. Yes. And, and it's getting a lecture. Yes. You, 
can never predict where these things are going to take you. Yeah. You've got to stay focused on the work. of action is to discredit the work they've done so we can dismiss the conclusions. I am advised the research is flawed. Is it? It's an opinion and one we should regularly disseminate. And we should back it up with as many studies as we can find supporting the safety of the MMR. When he was a year old. Yeah, when did he start talking again? A week or so after we started again. Oh. Um. I should have called him. Oh, it's okay. The boys will be happy to see you. Hi, Max. Hiya. What's all this? Oh, Nicky's going to start ABA. The teacher's going to come and work with him here at home. If it works all right, I'm hoping we can get him back into school again. <clears throat> I saw the papers. You aren't mad. It was that in the paper, too. He's talking. It's like he's back from the dead. You know what I mean. I'd love him to go to a mainstream school with other kids. I guess that's something to dream about. Chris, I'm sorry. Actually, I'm happy for you and for Nikki. You did a great thing not giving up. Anyway, that's why I came. Congratulations. I'll just say goodbye to the boys. Martin, it's okay. We're statistics. There have been no studies which have shown evidence that the virus is present in these children. So really, there is no basis for now supporting the hypothesis that there is any link between MMR vaccine and autism. Concerns expressed by Dr. Andrew Wakefield over the safety of the MMR vaccine were rejected today by the Chief Medical Officer in charge who said he would ask Dr. Wakefield to think very carefully about the suggestion he made to separate these vaccine control agencies, Stephen Evans, today dismissed growing concern over the MMR vaccine and Dr. Wakefield's research, stating that the research was flawed and that it made a number of errors of the fact. Did Sir Kenneth get my earlier message? The health minister asked me to liaise with Sir Kenneth from the Medical Research Council's Forum of Independent Experts. Yes, I can put it in the letter. Thank you. Dean, the Seddington Trust has considered a number of applications for funding and are happy to tell you that we intend to increase our grant to Dr. Wakefield and the Inflammatory Bowel Disease Study Group for their follow-up study and their DNA testing to ascertain if the measles is wild or vaccination strain. This work is evangelical. 
I wouldn't recommend that, and I couldn't support it. Dr. Elizabeth Miller, director of the Public Health Laboratory Service, has disregarded Dr. Wakefield's work at the Port of Reed. At the centre of his MMR, Rao found himself at the sharp end of the claims that it could not be replicated by other researchers, calling into question both the methodology and the results. I mean, who pays for the research and, and the new groundbreaking equipment? The drug companies. That's, that's right. The medical establishment. I'll get it. Thanks, it's completely dependent on them. I mean, these yeah. vaccinations bring in masses of money for these drug Vaccination companies. Vaccination is a multi-million pound business. Yeah. So, of course, the drug companies are going to fight very hard to protect it. And they'll fight dirty. That's what this is all about. We need to write letters to the Department of Health, to Dr. Roberts at the Royal Free. Professor yeah. Jowell. Professor Jowell. To your local MP. I've got a list of all the addresses on this sheet. Strong letters. They have a report from all these eminent doctors and they don't listen. I mean, what good's a letter from us, no matter how strong it is? We've fought too hard to give up now. Wakefield's not going to quit. So I don't think that we should. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I have a child to care for. We all know how much time it takes. I can't, I can't do everything. I can't. They won't believe us. No. They'll never believe us. Uh, <coughs> I thought uh, my wife, Christine, was mad in denial and I can't believe I'm watching the one doctor who listened be destroyed I, I read in a newspaper that you're just a bunch of middle-class women who can't accept the fact that there's something wrong with your child they're disregarding him they're ignoring you we cannot let them win My son was silent because he couldn't speak. We have no excuse. Is it from the Lancet? Mm -hmm. Will they publish the largest study? No. We'll find someone who will. We have had four resignations from the team. We don't have the money anyway since the funding was cut, so he was making them redundant. What's up? A good run? Oh. Oh, too old for this. Want some tea? So I think to myself, how did we get here? How is it that this triple vaccine gets licensed? I mean, for example, why didn't the trials spot the Urabi meningitis consequence? Why didn't their trials show any of the results we found? They weren't looking? They didn't do it. Full stop. They've got a single license for mumps, a single one for rubella, a single one for measles. So they go to the licensing agency and they say, each of these is licensed. We'll just put them together. Give us a license. And hey, presto, milk. Yeah. And eat. So how does this sound? A paper on the history of the MMR. Find out how long it was tested before it was introduced. See what we find. Call it through a glass dark. Are you up for it? What do you think? Andy, I'm leaving the research group. So, where's Danielson going? He's staying at the hospital. He's got the chance of promotion. But not if he works with you.
That's a video, guys. Good thing. If you had my granny, me, and Delalio in the back row, then we could watch the book. Yeah. So where did you meet Andy? Uh, we met at med school. Yeah. Oh. St. Mary's. Mm, seems like yesterday. Spot the lie. <laughs> Well, you're not a doctor, are you? Well, actually, I did practice for a while in a hospital, and then I joined the Medical Defence Union. Is that where you are now? Yes, huh? that's right. Oh, excellent. Anyway, this all looks lovely. Thank you. Really nice. Yes, You don't know what set it off. No, it's connected to the phone line. But where's the manual? I just, I just call the phone company. I've tried the reset number. It, it won't ring more than twice. I don't know. Can can you do it from there? Okay. She's getting a supervisor. Oh, no. oh. All right. Supervisor's getting a supervisor. Oh. Can't you just send out an engineer? How do you know that's not the problem? Okay. Another supervisor. How many do they have? We are trying to sort it out. How senior does the supervisor have to be before they can fix this? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. No, I'm not a drug dealer. I'm a doctor. Right. Thanks for your help. Did they figure out what was wrong? Yeah, there was an intercept on our line. Hmm? Our phone was tapped. Oh, Emma. Hi. Hi. Mr. Shields. Yeah. Hello, Missy. <laughs> Say hi, Miss Emma. Hi, Miss Emma. How's he doing? Oh, brilliantly. Yeah, no, it's all going really well. Say, <clears throat> Nikki, Nikki, say, I'm fine, Miss Emma. How are you? I'm fine, Miss Emma. How are you? He's doing brilliantly, don't you think? Yeah. Well, um, nice to see you yes. again. <laughs> Bye. Good boy. Oh. The data from the October test is in the file. You've looked everywhere? I have. It's gone. Can we do it again? <sighs> yeah. Then that's what we should do. Dr. Wakefield? Yes? I'm really sorry to interrupt you, but we've got a daughter who needs... We asked to be referred to you and got turned down. It wasn't until we saw our daughter's medical notes that we realized she'd been referred to another doctor at the hospital, not you. Our daughter has all the symptoms you discuss in your study. For Roberts to send a patient's consultant a letter saying I'm a zealot, saying I blame all the problems of the Western world on the MMR, that's bad. To stop a patient from being seen by me is interference in medical care. Do you know he did it? I've got the letter. Somebody is preventing them from seeing me. Most of my team is gone, the funding's gone. The DOH misrepresent our work. Why? You know why. Childhood immunization is sacrosanct. You can't 
call it into question without expecting a backlash. I'm not against vaccination. I never have been. I'm just... I'm just asking why. I know. But my obligation is to the patient. I agree. I'm going to retire, Andy. Do everything right. Make sure the Department of Health sees an advanced copy of your paper. Make sure that the protocol is not in doubt. Keep doing what you believe in. You're wrong. This is scaring me, Andy. It's okay. Have you let anything happen to you or the kids? What about you? Okay, right. Yeah. If we let them know we're scared, then they will. This isn't making me feel any better. Would it make you feel better if I stopped? No. Hi. Quick. What is it? On the news. They just asked Blair if Leo had the jab. And what did he say? He didn't answer. He ducked. On the whole, I support his view that children should be kept out of public life. But where his government tells all other parents of young children in the land that they must have the MMR vaccine, then I think that those same parents have the right to know whether the Prime Minister practices what he preaches. Nicky's in an intensive ABA program at the moment, and he's making extraordinary progress, isn't he? So by next year, I'm sure he'll be ready to join a mainstream school. We've given this a lot of thought. I've looked at your son's statement, and I'm afraid we can't offer him a place. We don't have the resources. You've read the statement. You have an obligation to him. Appropriate school is what the statement calls for. The school's governors and I believe we wouldn't be appropriate. There are other schools in the borough. I'm sorry. We don't accept that. Then you'll have to take it up with the local authority. Strong letter? Several. Oh. I was wondering if I could have Nicky for the weekend. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. How's your girlfriend going to feel about it? Sarah. That's the one. Yes, sorry. Sarah. Sarah will be fine. They managed to get the batch numbers for the MMR vaccine that was given to their children. Great! If we can just get funding for the DNA sequencing. And that's called the principle of interference. All doctors know. You combine three live viruses, you don't know what the effect's going to be. Same reason why you don't combine some medicine. Oh. Can you remember anyone when you were growing up who was autistic? No. And the number of kids with dyslexia and attention deficit disorder, it's all on the same neurological spectrum as autism. It's everywhere, and nobody seems to know why. Can we talk about something else? Sorry. Christine, 
Ask if I could take one of the boys this week. Yeah. I love having Max. This isn't going to work, Martin, is it? I'll be right with you. Gardner and Stein want to see me. Oh, good luck. Andy, get the money. The Department of Health has a public statement signed by the Royal College of General Practitioners, the British Medical Association, the Royal College of Nursing, the Faculty of Public Health Medicine, the UK Public Health Association, the Royal College of Midwives, the Community Practitioners... The MMR is a very effective vaccine with an excellent safety record. It's recommended by the World Health Organization and used in over 30 countries around the world. Have you read the work? Have you read anything we've done? No. I don't need to. Who's the bad scientist? We have to allocate resources in the best interests of the hospital and the community. The research needs to continue. A number of your colleagues are very worried that the nature of your work is having a negative effect on the uptake of the MMR. None of us can support that consequence. Perhaps there isn't a link. But unless we ask why and keep asking why, we'll never know. We don't feel it is in the interests of the Royal Free to continue the work you've been doing. You're going to shut down the work? The decision's been taken. Hi, Max. Oh, you're here. You owe me a fiver! You'll have to wait for it. Valerie, bet you weren't coming. I'm sorry I'm late. Had a kind of unexpected change in plan. Weekend hasn't really gone like I thought. If you don't want to take Nicky, I understand. No, it's not that. But I don't want you coming into the house because he's really excited and he'd just be more disappointed. Okay. See you. I'm late because I had to clear my things out of Sarah's flat. We've ended it. I booked a hotel. I didn't want to let Nicky down. It just didn't work out like I'd hoped. Do you want to spend a weekend here? I don't know that that's such a good idea. It's not like that, Martin. I wouldn't worry about it. Daddy! They finally got Wakefield. They closed him down. Valerie and I are drinking champagne and writing letters. Strong ones. Is there any other kind? Come on, Valerie. Come on, you. We weren't even talking about that much money. They just don't want to look. In case they don't like what they find. Well, what about the patients? You think another doctor's going to want to touch this? Oh, yeah. They've seen what happened to you. What did I achieve? Well, you pissed off your boss. The Department of Health, the, uh, the drug companies, just about every professional medical organisation in the UK, and you've had your phone tapped. I mean, that's not bad going for someone who's a bad scientist. Well, it makes me wonder what they're all so worried about. Then there's a small matter of what I'm going to do for work. You've got work to do, and you're not done yet. Who's going to pay for it? In light of everything? That's a detail. Linda, I'm going to hang on to this one. 
But if anyone's worried, it's just upstairs. Dr. Roberts? Yes? You must be happy. You got rid of Andrew Wakefield. I'm Christine Shields. Perhaps you remember my letters. I do. My son was damaged by the MMR. I'm sorry you think that. I don't think it. I know it. He has bowel damage. He didn't eat sawdust. Autistic kids, they do stuff like that. I heard that's what you said. Is it true? Constipated because they ate sawdust. Great diagnosis, considering you never even looked at my son. Do you want to look at him now? I don't think that would be appropriate. No, no, probably not, because that way he might become more than a statistic, and I know that would be very complicated for you. Vaccination has saved many lives, and will continue to save lives. I'm not against vaccination. Neither was Dr. Wakefield. I wish you the best of luck with your son. I'll need it. But all the luck in the world won't cure brain damage, will it? Mind you, the diet works wonders. I'm sorry to mention that. It's anecdotal. There's no proof that it works. And it might mean that Wakefield was right. I have worked. Yes, I'm sure you do. Got to get back to telling everybody that the MMR is safe. Got to keep that herd immunity up. Herd. They don't give multiple vaccines to cows. The MMR is safe. For most kids, yes. Not for mine. When does the cost get too high? There were only 12 children in that study. You know, there was this doctor called Canna in 1943. He's the one that identified autism, gave it its name. Do you know how many children he had in his study? I can't recall offhand. Eleven. So obviously autism doesn't exist. The study was too small. It's interesting. I'll look it up. Please do, yes. Don't trust me. I'm just a mother. Do drug companies fund much of the work here? Goodbye, Mrs. Sheens. Tony? Andy. How are you? Fine. I was uh, sorry to hear about... Yeah. Great news about your professorship. Oh, thanks. I know you really wanted it. Yeah. I still see patients. Good. I had to move on. Of course you did. I mean, writing was on the wall. I mean, the funding, you can't really buy the hand that feeds you. Yeah. Yeah, I managed to do that, didn't I? Kill a sacred cow and a golden goose all at once. Now we should just focus on the bowel disease. 2020 hindsight. Guess we know that now. Yeah. So, what are you doing now? Oh, I've got another paper coming out. Not great for my career, but, you know, pursuit of the truth and all that. Just, uh, just keeps getting in the way. Great news about your professorship. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Shields to see Mrs. Winters. Thanks. Oh, I found a flat about five minutes from the house. It's small, but it'll do. Oh, meeting these head teachers. Worse than a job interview. Here we go. Don't lose your temper. I can't believe you're telling me that. ABA. That's great. It's very successful. Yes, it is. It is. You're following the diet? <laughs> yes, yes, it's very strict. Good. We had another child here. Really made a difference to him. So, when can I meet Nikki?
obsessive, anally retentive mothers and fathers in denial is really just to thank Andy and all the doctors who worked with him and to celebrate the founding of Visceral, which is the charity that's going to support the work he's doing. Hard to be a prophet in your own land, I guess. And I know that we all want to wish Andy the best of luck in the United States with his research. To Andy. I used to think that I was alone. But there are more and more of us every week. And that's the biggest tragedy of all. And I know that at night, lying in the dark, we all have the same thought that binds us together and stops us from giving up. When I'm gone, who will look after my child? stop now. We can never stop. Oh, fine. Yes, in remarkably good health. Good. I see from his records he hasn't had his MMR. Mm. I got your postcard. He'll be going to nursery, so he needs to have his jabs. I'd like a single vaccine for him. We don't offer that, I'm afraid. You may have heard about the rise in the number of children with autism. Even the MRC says it's one in 166, although I suspect it's more. Yes. Better diagnosis, I think they put it out. Good to know you're improving. I think we'll give this one there. I realise that's disappointing for you, because you get more money if you can poison more children. Mrs but Shields, there's been a measles outbreak in South London. It is irresponsible not to immunise your child. Fuck you. Strong letter to follow. If you have any concerns or queries raised by this program, a fact sheet is available by calling 08705 555055, by logging on to 5.tv slash factsheets, or by writing to PO Box 5000, Manchester N60 3SU. Coming next year on 5, we join Kirsty Young for a studio debate on the controversial 
MMR vaccine.